Well, hello and welcome to all of our viewers around the world. I'm Fiona Langsharp, IBCLC Director of Communications and MC here at Gold Learning. Well, I have to say this is an event that we've been talking about for a few weeks now, and some of you are very excited about joining us since you have already registered. We're talking about our World Breastfeeding Week here, 2024 at Gold Learning, and I'm very excited to say that we have Sade Bell and Robin Kaplan, who are both going to be here with us. How lucky are we to have two presenters for that day? And I know that you're not going to want to miss out. You can actually head over to goldlearning.com right now. And this is a free and open access presentation. I know you're not going to want to miss it. When I tell you what the title is, I've got it right here. The Critical First Week of Breastfeeding, Strategies for Increasing Infant Health and Equity. So this is a topic, of course, World Breastfeeding Week is all about getting the message into the community. It's what we love. It's the core of what's at our heart when we're struggling in the grind and we think about the things that are important to us. It's often that we wish that more people knew about the importance and the whys and the hows. And so this presentation, I feel, is going to equip you. I had a little sneak peek at it, so I know what's happening. It's absolutely beautiful. I have to say, ladies, thank you so much for putting the time and effort into this. And welcome to Gold Learning. Sade Bell, it's great to have you here today. Thank you for joining us. Please tell us where you are in the world and a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, so my name is Sharday Bell. I am located in San, Di San Diego, California. Um, I am an IBCLC. I'm also a Spinning Baby Certified Parent Educator. Mm -hmm. I am a, a semi-retired doula. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, I love working with families in my area as well as worldwide via uh, virtual support. So I'm happy that we have that now. Um, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sade. It's exciting to hear that you're semi-retired, Dula. <laughs> Do we ever give it up? I don't know. I know. <laughs> Robin, welcome back to Gold Learning. It's great to have you here today. Tell us a little bit about what you've been up to recently. Sure. So um, I am also uh, based in San Diego. I have the pleasure of working with Sade on a fairly regular basis. Um, still running uh, our breastfeeding clinic. And about a year and a half ago, I was able to get a certification in functional nutrition. So one of my focuses recently has been helping families navigate reflux and just really fussy babies when we can't figure out exactly what's going on. Um, we've been, I've been diving into that, which has been really fun. Oh, that is super cool. I bet that is a high demand. Let me tell you it's <laughs> <laughs> every other baby. Um, all right. So let's talk about the topic because um, I know that you, I know you're excited to present it. I know that you're getting ready, um, you know, in the midst here, it's going to be coming up soon. I said August 7th. So I, I just want people to get an idea because we're going to be, obviously this is going to be going out online soon. Um, August 7th on the calendar, you will be live if people didn't hear that already, which means that we'll be able to get into some of the nitty gritty, both with you, Sade and Robin, because we'll have a live Q and A. Um, which is going to be really good too. Lots of folks will be live there on the day. And I know that you'll be really talking up a storm and exchanging some really fantastic ideas. So Sade, maybe I'll start with you and just asking you a little bit about why, why is this important to you? Like, what do you see, you know, in this um, realm of, you know, the first week, how important is it? Does it, does it really matter? You know, tell me a little bit about how you feel about it inside. So, um, you know, we know that the healthiest first food is human milk. Um, it's proven to have the best um, health and um, survival outcomes for tiny humans and human beings as they as they age. Um, so for me, uh, the big part of my part of the presentation is going to be about first food justice and um, eliminating infant feeding disparities in the first food system and how that relates to the critical first week of breastfeeding. I um, feel very, very strongly about the fact that we can't talk about, you know, why it's important and how it's important without first discussing some of the disparities and barriers mm. um, that might be present that would prevent us from having more success in that critical first week of breastfeeding and chest feeding. So that is um, my take on it. I'm uh, a huge advocate for 
um, eliminating first food deserts in San Diego, um, in our county, as well as a um, large geographic area in our county uh, that I am from called Southeast San Diego. It's my hometown. Um, and that's an area that we know that breastfeeding and chest feeding rates are um, particularly low. Um, and it's a predominantly black and brown area. Um, and we know that it's not due to, the, the rates are not low due to lack of education or anything like that. It's more about the lack of support um, and access to support in those areas. Um, and so that's, um, that's my take on it. And that's the angle that I'm coming from in this presentation. And I'd love to share more about um, the research that I've done um, in that area and how I am trying to um, do more work around it to help eliminate those disparities. Mm, wow. Do you think that when people think about the critical first week that that actually just gets dismissed right away? Like how is, that, what does that even exist? Is that sort of the premise of what you see? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the time, um, particularly for disparities, people don't even think about sure. um, the fact that there may be barriers. They just think, you know, people just don't know how or right. Um, and that's definitely not the case. A lot of it has to do with lack of access. Um, and I go even further in talking about um, first foods, not just human milk, but then those first solids um, right. and having access to nutritious first um, solid foods as well. So, um, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of structural components um, in our society that um, present barriers to, mm. um, you know, success and making sure that all babies have the, um, you know, the right to the healthiest outcome um, in their life and have the right to access that first food um, of human milk. So, yeah. Yeah. So some of the assumptions essentially that a lot of people would make in this world are just the fact that, oh, it's their problem or there is a problem with them or so forth and so on. And that's just not the truth. So right. you're going to really uncover that for us and help us understand what we can do next, what our responsibility is essentially right in that area. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's going to be really good. Thank you so much. We'll come back to you in just a minute, Robin, when you were going through your part in this presentation, what struck you as being the most important? Well, just to piggyback on Charday's, um, which she has mentioned, it, it really is just a, a lack of resources, a lack of uncoordinated care, mm. um, and which starts prenatally. So while we're talking about the critical first week of chest and breastfeeding, we can't forget that the lack of access is starting prenatally. And even before that, even before sure. yeah. um, these families actually get pregnant. And so we will talk about um, just when our practitioners and providers are maybe biased unsupportive, um, unsupportive birthing environments. And then we don't have coordinated care where we should, you know, where practitioners are referring out to, um, to lactation support personnel who are able and professionals who are able to provide that care. And that warm handoff is something that is often missing as well too, where mm. if that warm handoff is not occurring in that first week, then a lot of these families com completely just fall off. Um, and as Chardet mentioned, it's not a, it's not a lack of interest when we, right. I mean, these numbers, we see these across the board, um, throughout the world that initiation rates are incredibly high. So mm -hmm. what that tells us is, is that that warm handoff to a care provider who can provide trauma informed care and, right. um, and unbiased care, um, it's, that's something that's, that's just not happening. And yeah. so we'll be talking about, um, how to promote that coordinated care in, in the communities that we live in. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, Sharday, I was just talking to a pediatrician the other day, um, not, not too far from your area. And what struck me as being very interesting, been in practice for several years, love what they do um, and had no idea about any resources in their community and was eager to learn. But it, it struck me, I was like, okay, so now we give them, you know, now we can provide resources if we can get them there, if there's, if we can break down the barriers. But what happens when they get there is that, again, you were, you know, Robin was mentioning about this warm handoff. Um, what is happening? Why is it that a pediatrician of today would not have that information? I'm not sure why a pediatrician wouldn't have that information. I, yeah. I would hope that they would, I would hope that they would, um, you know, have enough um, 
knowledge to ask a colleague for more information on that. Mm -hmm. I do think that there um, needs to be a little bit more emphasis on getting that information out to pediatricians' offices and to their clinics and to hospitals and letting them know that um, private practices are out there and that there is outpatient care available, um, how you can best um, support your families by providing them with that at their, their regular, you know, uh, sure. pediatric checkups. Um, I work pretty closely with UCSD hospital, which is a large hospital here. Um, and I've let them know like the way to refer to me and, and what that process looks like a step-by-step -step, and make it very easy because I think sure. a big part of it is for, um, doctors, they're busy and they have a lot going on and you have to yeah. chart and do all of these things. And so just making it a little bit easier, um, to, contact um, a, a local lactation resource, um, as well as letting them know that there are also like peer-to-peer -peer support groups. I think that's very, very important um, for chest and breastfeeding success is just being around peers that are doing the same thing. So I think it, I think it's a both and. Um, we, we need to, as lactation professionals, be more aggressive, I think, in going out and getting into clinics and getting into hospitals and letting them know that we're there, no matter how many times we hear you know, no, or that they don't want to hear it right now. I think <laughs> right. we just need to be a little bit more aggressive with that. And they also need to have an understanding that we are here to support them and their families. And we're all here to work together as a team. And no one's, you know, trying to do more than the other. We're all just looking for the best income, uh, the best interest of the child and the best possible health outcome. Yeah, no, absolutely. And to be fair, yeah, this pediatrician did want to help, but they felt like they they just were not connected. You mm -hmm. know, I don't know their entire circumstance, but it, it was, you know, again, it, it, but it, it was enlightening. It was a good conversation. Um, and I was able to to pass along, you know, some information. So, That's yeah, but I, I think these are the common things that I think some people think that they don't exist, but they are still happening in our community. Mm -hmm. I love what you said, like, we really need to put ourselves out there. We we have a responsibility here and outside of here as lactation professionals to really continue to advocate that we're here, we're present, we're available. Um, and I did like what you said about, you know, also making it easy um, for them to refer as well. Those are going to be key things, I think, that uh, we can come together and brainstorm of how we can do those things in each of our communities. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, ladies. This went by really fast, but thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate you being here today. I think we could have talked so much longer, but we'll leave that for the day. August 7th, uh, we're going to have both of you come back, of course, present on this topic, the critical first week of breastfeeding strategies for increasing infant health and equity. I'll look forward to having you both, Sade Bell and Robin Kaplan. Thank you so much for being here with me here today. And we'll look forward to seeing all, of course, you, our viewers, very soon online. Bye-bye for now, everyone.